Welcome to the GT Woodshop and to part three, not two or four, I got confused, sorry, of building cabinets for my ever-growing collection of bourbon. Here's an example. And apparently now rye whiskies, and who knows what else I may diversify into in the future. Maybe a little Spanish brandy, cognac, hmm, gin even. Anyway, focus. In the last video, I cut the dovetails in the cabinets and did a dry assembly and was very pleased. You may have noticed, chuffer than a witch's chuffin thing. In this video, I intend to complete the cabinets. So I need to cut the rebate to take the back panel. And here's the oak veneered MDF that I plan on using for that. So I'll cut this to size, fit the back panel, and then it's on to brand new territory and Festool's LR32 system. Crack on. Here's my dry assembled cabinet, complete with Woodpecker's beautiful right angle clamps. Just love the way these Woodpecker tools are finished. I may be forced to buy some more. So just checking the final assembled measurements. I'm bang on 500, but I must admit to a small inaccuracy on the height due to inaccuracies when rough cutting my timber to size. So I finished size at 845 mil. It's a good job it's not for a client. But never mind, I'm not going to complain about that. So I'll rough cut my panels to 850 by 500 and then I can size them down on the table saw to exactly the size I want. My three oak MDF back panels are rough cut to size, awaiting final dimensioning. But I'm not going to do that until I've cut my groove in the cabinet panels. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I route my groove right in the middle of the dovetails, as they're so wide, I can route all the way through the panels without worrying about my six mil slot showing on the outside and thereby negating the need to have to set stops. Sounds like a plan to me. And I think the easiest way for me to achieve that will be on the router table. As I've done such a perfect job of alignment with my center cart, in my opinion, of course, I feel very confident to run my rebate for my back panel based on the back edge and everything will be wonderful. My back panel oak veneered MDF is 16 mil and the closest size router bit I have is this one, which is a snads under. So I'm gonna to have to make two passes, but it's only a snads. So I'll set this bit up in the router table at dead center. And then I'll nidge it towards the back edge so that I still maximize the amount of room I've got for my beautiful bourbon. So as I did in the previous video, I'm using my trend depth gauge. Excellent little bit of kit. I don't think, I think it was less than 10 pounds on the trend website to set my six mil depth of my rebate. That'll do nicely. Lock that off. And then I'm gonna set my fence to zero to center.
and my centre of rebate is 23mm back from the back edge. So I'm all good to make a test cut. So my test rebate is cut, but as suspected, it's too narrow for my board. My caliper says my board is 16, and my slot is 15.7. So I think I'm gonna set the fence back a mil, therefore taking another millimeter off the back plane. And that's lovely. Just a nice bit of slack there that the glue will take up, but it gives me that bit more flexibility, makes it a little bit easier when gluing up. So now I need to choose front and back of the boards and then route my groove in the back of all of them. So another few minutes at the router table. So I've assembled all of the panels into their individual cabinet groups, if I can use that phrase. Cabinet one, cabinet two, cabinet three. All the panels inside faces are facing down all the front edges are facing away from the fence so that i don't screw it up can i say that make a mistake at this stage of the game as that would cause me to cry i've reset my fence back to its original position which correcting myself is 22 mil to center not 23 so i'll route all pieces at 22 mil and then i'll move the fence forward to make the back section one more smaller giving me the correct size groove Rebates all cut, boards now collectively grouped within their cabinet assignments. Next job is to cut the panels on the table saw. So I could back calculate the exact width that the panels need to be, and I think I probably will anyway, just to confirm. But I'm also going to use my bar gauge. Now this, if you haven't seen one before, or used one before, is well, nothing short of delightful. A fantastic idea, a very old fashioned idea, I believe. Great for those internal measurements. And literally slacken off the wheels, slide it to the size you want, then push it up against each internal surface and lock it off. And then that is the exact size you need your panel to be. So I'm going to double check with this on one of the cabinets. And then I'm going to cut the panels after a nice cup of tea. So I've dry assembled one of my cabinets. And if you remember, I said my camera was 845 tall to the outside and 500mm wide. To the outside so 
bar gauge into my slot. Incidentally, I should have mentioned that I've put both extension rods on the bar gauge, which comes with it, which come with it. So you undo the knobs, push the bar gauge out against the side walls in the slots. Keep tension on, do them up and then just move it side to side to make sure you have got it tight. There we go. So if I then take that out and put it between two straight edges, so there, to there, and measure between, Eight nineteen. So if I now do the mass, hope you can see that. So I've got a nineteen mil mil panel minus a six mil rebate is thirteen mil, times two for each end is twenty six mil. Eight forty five minus twenty six is eight nineteen. All points concur. Marvelous. And I'll do the same for the width. So the finished size of my panel according to the bar gauge and confirmed by the tape measure is 819 by 474. So I'm going to drop a mil off of each of those just to give myself a little bit of breathing room. So I'm going to cut 818 by 473. And here's my cabinet completely dry assembled. Fit is good. Nice little recess in the back. I suppose I could put a French cleat in there if the need occurred. Okay. So that essentially is the cabinet complete. I now need to deal with the knots and inclusions that I have. So time for a spot of resin. Well, these are all the panels with holes, splits, cracks, knots in them that I need to deal with. And none of them are huge uh, apart from this one which is fairly impressive i'll bring you closer to have a look in a minute there's the big one that i mentioned earlier it's rather lovely it's a shame it wasn't in the middle maybe it'll end up at the top but i have had quite a significant amount of breakout so the edge of the dovetail is missing 
I might attempt to resin fill that after it's assembled and glued. So I've got flame copper, deep orange, bronze red, and terra orange, all from Epo decks. I've not used them before, but they're certainly um, very aggressively priced. I also have some gold, which is indeed of a little mix, and some brushed copper. Now, I, I think all I can do is to say that this is representative of I'm leaning towards the brushed copper. I'm going to be using glass cast 10, which I've had a modicum of success with in the past. Who else remembers the Misty River table? I've certainly not forgot it. So I've got a couple of cups so that I can do the pour into one cup, then I'll do a mix in another cup. I've got what used to be my wife's kitchen scales that I've had to replace because I've got resin on them and the obligatory cup of tea. problem I'll have is if it leaks into that bit of tape that I've just put on and fills it I'm gonna to have to try and chisel or grind it away <laughs> 